We just picked up this old rototiller. It hasn't been running like 25 years and we're gonna try and fix it up and make it work. Uh, as you can see, it's got uh, helicopters from maple trees in there, bunch of stuff all jammed up. Um, the gas tank did look clean. Obviously it was completely empty, but we'll take that off. We'll clean the carburetor, obviously. I did, uh, you can pull it here and it does, it does, you know, the cylinder's not frozen, which is good. Um, so we'll replace the spark plug, go around uh, WD-40 at all again so I can get the bolts out without cracking them, hopefully, and we'll see if we can get it running. Now that we've gone around and blown everything off, I'm gonna take this, which is like a strong WD-40, um, and spray it on everything. So any bolts or nuts that I feel like I'm gonna have to take off, stuff on the carburetor that, you know, probably will need an adjustment, pretty much everything. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna soak it in this. Um, yeah, if this thing runs, it'll smell, but it's better to have it smell than have the bolts break off inside, and then you gotta re-thread them put new ones in which would be a pain plus it'll make any throttle linkage or engaging the, the belts uh, a little bit easier for everything to move now another thing that I noticed is this is the throttle that it's supposed to change it up there on the carburetor but this really doesn't move which I mean is expected it actually slides in and out here but you can see that it lumps moves this cable up when I do it which means it's not moving all the way through. So I'll, I'll just need probably new throttle linkage, but a uh, new throttle cable, I mean, but I'll uh, try spraying in the ends and seeing if it loosens up. So one of the first problems you can see that we have is when you move the throttle cable at the handles, it doesn't move this end. Um, this is pretty stuck, so I can't even, can't even move it with my fingers. Um, so we're gonna try and just turn it a little bit. All right, we now have the rototiller inside after we got it all sprayed down and cleaned off. And we'll check to see if we have any spark on the spark plug. I know when you pull it, nothing happens. So that could be a, a number of things. spark plug actually doesn't look too bad um, but I did buy another one so we will end up just replacing it so this is the new spark plug that I bought it's the same it's the same one as the old one um, now for checking for spark you'll probably want to turn off most of your lights um, but what you'll do is you'll just put the electrode of the spark plug to the metal of the head like like that or whatever and I, I you probably won't be able to see it but i'll uh, i'll pull it real quick just to see if i see any spark and i don't see any spark um, but you could also check it again with the light off but i'm sure it's it's not sparking let's take a look inside the gas tank i don't think it's that bad in here but let's let's see it actually yeah it doesn't look that bad it looks like it Definitely has some like sand or dirt um, in there. So we'll have to take it off and then blow it all out. All right, now that we know that the gas tank needs a little work, which we should have, which we assumed, we'll take the gas tank off and work our way down to the flywheel anyway, which it will have the magnet on it and the coil, which will help diagnose why we're not getting any spark. Probably could use to be cleaned up a bit. One more, just to undo the gas line over here. 
We can get to the carburetor filter by just undoing this wing nut. And popping this cap off. It's definitely old, but it's not not too bad. So you can probably throw some compressed air through it and a little oil back on it, and I think it should be okay. Now, once you get the gas tank bolts off, or probably if it was smart, I would have done it before. Just take a a small flathead. and go around it. And if I rip it, I rip it, but I think it's coming off. So now you can remove the whole gas tank. Now that we have the gas tank off, I'm gonna remove the gas tank mount, which is these two bolts. three bolts up top here. Once you get the last one off, you can slide the gas tank mount off, put it aside, and now for this part, gotta get this shield off. We have six bolts, three on this side, and three on the opposite side. I don't think we have to take the pull starter off, but we'll find out when I get all six of these bolts loosened up and I try to take it off. Now that we got all six of those bolts off, does, so I don't know that you had to necessarily undo the bolts to held that top part on, but we did anyway. Now this whole front part does come off now. And hopefully I can, Looks like due to this this bar, I think for lifting it up, if it ever gets stuck under the ground, I'm not able to slide this over the flywheel, but you can see that the flywheel's back here with the coil. So I'll take this uh, pull starter off so we can slide the cover out. Once we got the uh, pull started off with the five uh, flathead bolts, we're able to slip this off. Put it to the side. And now this is our flywheel. As you can hear, it's moving the piston up and down. And to get to the magnet and coil, they're located on the inside. So you take the, and get this big bolt off, um, which is just gonna spin. So this might be the wrong way to do it, but I'm just gonna stick an extension down through here into the fins of the flywheel. this free. Which it did. Hopefully this will come off. That might be a little stuck. Now if your machine hasn't run or has run but hasn't come apart in a long time like mine has, your flywheel's probably stuck on to the shaft as well as it's also being held on by the key and wood drift. So realistically, like you're not gonna get it to come off very easy. So you're probably gonna wanna take your hammer, give it a couple taps around the edge to try and free it up. Seems to be stuck on there pretty well. I also haven't really got a good hit at it. Oh, there we go. So now this is your flywheel. Obviously now this is your magnet. I'm gonna clean this up because that's what's gonna create the contact for the magnetic field with the coil. That's gonna send your spark to the spark plug. 
and in my case, it's not working. Um, so once we clean that up, hopefully that'll let us see spark. If not, maybe we have a bad condenser, which since this is points in a condenser, uh, I think the points are behind here. And I believe this guy down here is the condenser. All right, I've now gone through and, and cleaned up right here around the coil. I've cleaned the contacts. Um, I just took a fine sheet of sandpaper and just went back and forth just a few times just to clean them up so I can see that they'll contact well with the magnet. Obviously, you don't want to increase the gap between the contacts of the coil and the magnet when it goes by. But you also want to just take your fine piece of sandpaper and go over the magnet just a little bit. Just clean it up. You can see that it was really dirty and now it shines. Um, so when the magnet spins around, it should create the magnetic field in the coil which should then allow the spark plug to go off and have the proper timing because of the, the keyway, the key drift on the bottom of the, the shaft here. So if your pull cord has a hard time retracting, which mine doesn't, it, it goes back in pretty well, as good as I could ask for. Um, if yours has a hard time though, what you'll wanna do is you wanna take this bolt out of the top of here, just unscrew it, this will come off. There's a little spring here, which hooks into this hole. And then this end, when you put it back together, will loop over this, this peg. So you want to loop it over and stick it on. That helps it uh, spring back to where it's supposed to sit and retract these back inside. Um, but if yours doesn't retract well, what you want to do is you want to slide this up a little bit. Let's see if I can go high enough where you can see. I just had it off, so. Work it up. I don't know if you guys can see in there, but. There, so you can see in here, there's a big spring coil. You'll wanna lube that all up and then just carefully slide it back down. You don't have to go up as high as I did, um, but if you do, it should just go back together like that. Um, and then when you pull it, once you spray this in there, it should should retract really well again. So if you do pull your pull cord apart, just make sure that if you take these little metal flaps that protrude out when you pull the pull cord that end up spinning the crankshaft, that when you put them back in, you put them in, see there's a little, on this spring, there's a little, little tab. Make sure these go behind that tab so that way when these come out, the spring springs them back in because you don't want to keep those out or they'll end up clashing when the motor's running. So now that we've cleaned the coil and the flywheel magnet, um, before we test the spark, let's take the cover that hides the points off. So this is the condenser and this is the cover that hides the points. There should be two screws, but it only has one on the top. So these are the contacts and the points right here. It opens and you can see that they're, they're pretty corroded looking. So in order to make a good contact, um, you can take that same piece of sandpaper and just stick it between the, the contacts and just slide it out a few times. Looks like a lot of moisture had gotten in there. And make sure you do it this way and then turn it around so that you get you clean off both both sides of the contact. And these also can be adjusted. So when dealing with points and condenser, if you're getting a weak spark, no spark, or an alt occasional spark like I was getting, um, take a look at the gap between your contacts. Um, to do that, you want to have a feeler gauge. The gap's supposed to be 20 thousandths of an inch, which is 0 0.02. Um, so to, to do it, you, you turn the crankshaft mm -hmm. until it opens at its farthest point, and then you 
put your 20,000, well, you crack open this screw here. So you loose, open that, and then you stick your 20,000s inside and tighten it back up. Now, when you stick the 20,000s inside, it's supposed to just go through with a little bit of resistance. And then obviously close it up, pull it, and you should get spark every time. All right, hopefully we all can see this. Um, so I've now cleaned the contacts between the points, the coil, and the magnet on the coil, uh, flywheel. So let's see if we have a spark. Watch right in that gap there. Yeah, I don't know if you saw that, but we just had a spark there, so that's great. Um, now we're gonna go into the carburetor, see how dirty that is. So now to take the carburetor off, the carburetor is held to the head by these two bolts back here. Um, I think I'm gonna take this air filter back plating off by removing these three bolts. I think that'll help me get to this one. This one's still gonna be quite a pain to get to, but maybe we can, okay. So now that I got these bolts as far back as they can go, I'm just gonna take a hammer, because it's just stuck on there, and just. Because that gasket is really old. Looks like it was even a paper one. So it's just, it's just stuck on. These bolts are long enough. There's the other one. Now for this part, you just gotta turn this around the corner. Of course, everything is. I guess we'll undo it from that end. It's easier. All right, well, let's take the carburetor apart and at least see how bad the bowl is. See if there's a bunch of gunk in there, if the float's toast. See if we need to buy a new carburetor or if this one's worth saving. Hopefully it's worth saving. So I don't even know if you'll be able to buy a new carburetor for this. Actually, that, that doesn't look too bad. Seems to be working and actually looks fairly clean. Let's see if I can push that out. Oh geez, the float and the needle don't look too bad. Except for actually, usually there's a like a wire on here that wraps around on this. So that's unusual, but maybe this one just doesn't doesn't do that. Uh, we'll spray some carb cleaner in it. And
now that we got it running and we know that the, the, the tiller blades work and you can put it into either forward low or forward high, um, we figured it was time to change the fluids. Um, this is the oil. Uh, this is the dipstick and the fill hole. Uh, it has the low and over full marks on the dipstick. And then this is where you drain the oil. Um, if you haven't done gear oil on these before, it's located underneath the handles. So this, this T handle here sat in there holding the handles that you use to drive it in there. Uh, so that's where you fill it. And then you drain the gear oil right below the, the left. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and leave any questions or comments you might have below.